Shabbat Shabbaton means Shabbat means Shabbat Sabbath and Shabbaton means minor Sabbath or lesser Sabbath. So the Slonimer is uh, goes on to elaborate on what does that exactly mean? That's an interesting concept. Uh, the Torah will refer to uh, some uh, events, some special times as a Shabbat Shabbaton. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, like this... Um, Depending on context, you could either call that the Sabbath of all Sabbaths, the mothers of all Sabbaths. <laughs> and by the way, Yom Kippur is referred to that. Uh, the Sabbath itself is referred to that. And in a moment, we'll see that the, the three different ways that, um, uh, that the Torah, or three different things that the Torah is um, attributing that level or that, uh, you know, that adjective, the Sabbath, of all Sabbaths. <laughs> so, uh, fascinating teaching, and uh, let, let's uh, understand that uh, a little better. So, first of all, let, let's start with um, Shabbat, or Sabbath, and the idea there is to cease worldly involvement um, to, in order to allow space for a different experience, a different focus, right, or a lack thereof. Shabbat literally means to cease. And then a Shabbaton, uh, coming from the word katon, katon means small. And for instance, piuton is a Hebrew, modern Hebrew for kindergarten. So. It's where the paut means a small child. The pauton is a, a school for small children. Or um, I'm, thinking, I'm trying to think about other examples. Uh, uh, shnaton, right? So um, it's sort of like a, a, a shana is a year, and a shnaton is sort of like a minor year or, or, or a year of... Uh, um, you know, uh, um, a retreat year. So here you have the word Shabbaton, a minor Sabbath. M minor in the sense of, um, in the sense of, uh, not that it's devaluing the Sabbath, but um, there's perhaps less involved. Or, um, um, you know, when we say on, about a holiday that it's a Shabbaton, it's a, uh, it's like as if a Sabbath, right? But it doesn't have all the complexity of the Sabbath. It's actually a little, uh, little simpler. Now, the Sonomer, though, is going to take us in. It's, uh, in this Parsha, uh, uh, when the discussion of the festivals appears, the, the term Shabbat Shabbaton uh, is used uh, repeatedly. It's a beautiful teaching about what that means, the depth of that. Here we go. Halashon Shabbat Shabbaton nizkar parasha li'inyan Shabbat v'chen li'inyan Yom Kippurim. In this parasha, the term Shabbat Shabbaton is, um, is mentioned in reference to both Shabbat and to Yom Kippur, Yom Kippurim. V'od matzinu chen li'inyan Shmita le'halan v'parashat Behar. And also in Parshat Behar, it's mentioned in reference to the Shemitah year. That, that's the year when um, we uh, let the, um, the land um, stay uh, a rest and um, <clears throat> we, we cease for a year to, uh, to cultivate and to, uh, and to work the land. And that's the, the Shemitah year, and it happens, it's also a Sabbath, because it happens every seventh year. Uh, every fifth year, we have the Jubilee year, which is an extra uh, extra year off of the land. Uh, we also um, um, free slaves, and we also free debts. We uh, uh, um, forgive debts, etc. So, so here we have uh, the... the um, um, the Shemitah year, the seventh year, is also referred to as a Shabbat Shabbaton, a Sabbath of Sabbaths, or a Sabbath in a minor Sabbath, 
or the land. And we need to uh, pause here and, and try to understand what's so special about these three occasions, the Sabbath, Yom Kippur, and the Shemitah year, um, that, that they deserve to, uh, uh, to be referred to as Shabbat Shabbaton. Ubeferush Shabbat Shabbaton, Katava Eben, uh, Ibn Ezra. So the commentator, the classical commentator Ibn Ezra, Ezra wrote about uh, this term, explaining in the following way, Shehi Shbitat Shbita She'ein Lemala Mimena. That these are a, um, a retreat of retreat that uh, uh, for which there is no uh, no higher, no greater. We'll call this the uh, greatest retreats of all, for you know, to, to, to be simple. So Ibn Ezra, a Shabbat Shabbaton means the greatest retreat of all. So the Lord were asked, and, the, and then why are these three occasions, Yom Kippur, Shabbat, and, and the Shemitah year, um, why, why specifically these three are referred to as the greatest retreat of all, in, um, to paraphrase Ibn Ezra? the Mashmaut Shabbat Shabbaton, so he's going to parse this out here. And he'll say, look, when Ibn Ezra says, Shvitat, Shvita, he say, look, the Shvita, to cease in and of itself, is a negative term, or it's a, it's a regressive term, because it's talking about the, uh, the cessation of labor, or the mechanic, the mechanics of, of ceasing. But when we say Sabbath of Sabbaths, Shabbat Shabbaton, we're actually talking about the affirmative, that which is beyond the negative, beyond the cessation. It's another level. Uh, there, there's a stopping, but then there is also the proactive uh, attainment that happens in that stopping. Shvitash en lemala mimena, and that's why Ibn Ezra calls it this a retreat, uh, the greatest retreat of all. Because we're talking about a proactive um, ceasing. It's kind of like when we talk about active listening, right? Listening is a passive um, endeavor. Ceasing, a, a, a Shabbat, a retreat is a passive endeavor. We're stopping some activity so we can become passive, but it has an element of proactivity, so it's active ceasing. And he says, why? What, what is this? What, how is it proactive? Because the Sabbath of Sabbaths has the aspect of being as if a soul. Bechinat neshama. And he continues, he explains, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Natan Bechol Davar Neshama. The Holy One has implanted a soul in everything, Bechol Davar, in anything that exists, any existence, any material or any, um, you know, anything that, that is in reality as we know it, has within it a hidden layer of soul. Venishmata <clears throat> Briya Ya Shabbat Kodesh. And the soul of creation of the world 
is the Holy Sabbath, Yom Adin Nishmata, as, as it is uh, um, referred to in other sources as the Day of the Soul. Uvashana, yesh yom echad, yom kipurim, shu nishmat kol ashana. So, let me just uh, digress for a second to uh, um, uh, to remind us uh, uh, the paradigm that he's referring to. It's a common Hasidic paradigm that the Baal Shem Tov actually introduced, and that is that the world or reality is, is divided into three levels or three, um, really three different dimensions. One dimension is the f- physical, that is the world. The next dimension is time, and it's called Shana. Shana in Hebrew is year, but when, when we say Shana, we say uh, year, uh, we're alluding to the uh, the dimension of time. <clears throat> and the third dimension is the dimension of, of soul. In the dimension of time, Yom Kippurim, Yom Kippur, is the soul of the whole year. And also, in the dimension of uh, of earth, of physical physical existence, there we also have um, we also have a Sabbath, and that is the uh, we, we also have a soul. The soul of the earth is the practice of the Shemitah year, and that gives the the sanctity, the sacredness. Uh, to to the earth. And thus, um, the the Holy Sabbath is called a Shabbat Shabbaton to God. Because the Sabbath does not um, belong only to this world only to um, the physical dimension. Because Shabbat, the Sabbath cuts through the upper realm and the lower realms and in all the worlds. And here we're talking about Kabbalistically, we're talking about um, uh, the, the four different worlds, but there are multiple, multi- multiples of four within four within four. Uh, so we have... Uh, um, the world of uh, Atzilut, of emanation, the world of Briah, of um, of creation, the world of uh, Yetzirah, the world of, of um, formation, and then we have the world of Asiyah, the world of uh, action, which is reality as we know it, the ordinary reality. And the Sabbath cuts through all of those. So you could say that the Sabbath is the soul of the world's plural, of all dimensions, and in the scheme of, of you know, the, the uh, soul, time, and, and physicality, so this is really at the level of soul. So it's the soul in all its, on, all, on, its, on its entire spectrum, from the highest from eternity to the densest right here on earth. That's how the Sabbath is the soul of all the worlds. <clears throat> And he references that in a quote in the Zohar that says that uh, all blessings uh, in the upper words, worlds and the lower worlds are all um, dependent or linked into the seventh day. All the different worlds, as I had just uh, described, and the Shema Mekayemet Otam Yeshabat Kodesh, the soul that um, is sustains them, that that feeds, that nurtures, you know, kind of pumps up the life energy into them, is the Holy Sabbath. Ubichlal Ma'amar Zohar Kadosh Shabbat Ihu Yom Nishmata, as the Zohar. Uh, references and, and teaches us that uh, the Sabbath 
again is Yom Adin Shmata, the day of the soul. Shabbat Kodesh in Shmat Kol Abriah. So the Sabbath is uh, uh, therefore again it's being a little redundant, <coughs> and uh, that just means how seriously and deeply he feels about it. Um, that the Holy Sabbath is uh, is the soul of the whole of all of creation. So it takes a little stretching the mind to 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 you know to really wrap one's um, kind of a, a coherent embrace around this concept, because how can a day, how can time be, um, you know, be a soul of the world? It's kind of a little bit of uh, you, you know when we say comparing apples and oranges, how do these things actually connect? Um, but this is this is. Um, the Solomon's Rebbe, Rebbe's koan, you know, this Shela, for us, and as we wrap our mind around this, I think we're really putting ourselves in a place to um, to derive, to draw so much more um, juice from the practice of um, of a seventh day retreat. And here we continue to uh, to Yom Kippurim. The Yom Kippurim Nikra Shabbat Shabbat Shabbaton Lachem, and the Yom Kippurim is is uh, referred to as the Sabbath of Sabbaths for you. Moshe Erich Bezeh Besefer Achinuch, as is um, elaborated in Sefer uh, Achinuch, the uh, Book of Education. Um, that the Holy One has fixed Yom Kippur from the very beginning of creation. The Lokishara Mitzvot Vemoadim, and not like the other festivals and holidays, Shanitnu Rak Mikabalata Torah. So he's saying here that Yom Kippur is unique. Because we got all the holidays uh, from Moses when you know the Torah was giving at Mount Sinai. And here we are when Parshat Emor, and you know this is uh, uh, this is when we're um, you know the, the list is being presented. Uh, this is how you're observed. This is the new the new Jewish religion, right? That's forming in in the desert um, immediately after the uh, receiving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. But Sefer Chinuch is teaching us no. He says Yom Kippur had already been ordained and given at um, at creation during the six days of creation. Um, I'm not familiar particularly with this teaching in Sefer Chinuch. I'm curious, um, you know, I'd like to go and research it um, because I'm not. Uh, he's not telling us how they. How there's, what was the textual reference for that? Um, and I'd be curious to see that. Uh, it is. It, it does say that the Sabbath comes right after. Um, the sin of Adam and Eve with the apple and the Sabbath was the, um, uh, the um, atonement for that, um, you know, for that sin. Uh, so that way, the first Sabbath was also the first Yom Kippur, um, you know, for the first sin, etc. Perhaps that's what he's referring to. But there, there you go, Yom Kippur is uh, this retreat for purification and atonement uh, is built into the scheme of time um, right from the beginning of creation. So it's an opportunity for us to uh, not go through more than a full year without cleansing out, without uh, completely uh, erasing the hard drive and starting fresh, right? So... Um, if that is not a Sabbath of Sabbath, a retreat um, above uh, above all retreats, what is, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thus, uh, this day, Yom Kippur, is the soul that sustains the entire year. That's why it was um, uh, fixed from the beginning of creation. 
he says without uh, uh, Yom Kippur embedded into the into creation from the beginning, creation would not have been able to um, to sustain itself. You know, there, there would have been too much clutter accumulated in the psychic fabric of of the world. And now a little elaboration about um, mitzvat shmita. Shabbat Shabbaton Shabbat Aretz in Mitzvah Shvita and the Sabbath of Sabbaths of the uh, of the sanctity of the land, land of Israel, is the Mitzvah of of Shmita. Shabbat Yisrael Gamla Damayish Nishama that in the land of Israel teaches astronomer the land itself has a soul. So what is the soul of the land? The practice, the mitzvah, the sacred practice of letting uh, the land lay fallow, letting it rest. What a beautiful concept. Right? The soul of the land is not something in the land. You see that the soul of the land is is a different paradigm, a different dimension. It's a practice. It's it's actually a a letting go, an active ceasing. So, I imagine that if I let the land do its thing, there's something that gets expressed fruit from it. That when I'm intervening, which is fine for six years. But that intervention somehow is squashing the land's soul. And when I just let it go wild, then I discover the real holiness of the land. Something beautiful about that. And this gives the land the sanctity that allows its inhabitants us, the people of Israel, the opportunity to live on sacred land. And therefore, the um, the year of Shemitah is um, brings in sanctity into the earth. And that's why the fruit of the land of Israel are also uh, sacred sacred fruit. Right, so we have, uh, uh, we know that we have the seven sacred fruits of the land of Israel. We, uh, um, you know, on Shavuot, we, we bring them to the temple. On Sukkot, we decorate the sukkah with them. Um, and what makes them sacred? Not because they're growing on the, on the land. It's because we manage the land in a way that allows its sanctity to express itself, and thus the land is giving us sacred fruit. Profound. So the Sabbath, or the sacred press process of withdrawal, of active cessation of these three occasions because they're representing the three dimensions of reality as we know it. Uh, the dimension of uh, physicality, which is the Shnat the, the the cessation from uh, cultivating the earth. Uh, the cessation of uh, in time, when we take Yom Kippur off as a time for atonement and a time for evaluating the year and, and evaluating our conduct, you know, the accumulation of, um, of merits or demerits over time. And then on the level of soul, the Sabbath itself, which is the soul of all worlds, kind of the spiritual, um, the ceasing on 
in all dimensions. Can you imagine the opportunity, the, uh, the opening of, of, of a conscious observance of these three levels and the kind of wholeness, the kind of sacredness, the kind of sanctity that that uh, potentially can bring into our lives. No wonder the Torah is calling this not just the Sabbath, but the retreat of all retreats, the retreat above all. May we be blessed to um, uh, find find those places, find that balance, um, and uh, deepen our, our understanding of, of uh, such a, a well-tested tradition um, that often we take for granted because we learn in the way of rote. We learn it because we uh, these are traditions that we uh, uh, we mimic. We we learn from uh, you know from teachers, from relatives, from we we get it from past generations as as a legacy. Uh, but do, do we really understand it? The Sabbath of all Sabbaths, the retreat, the retreat above all retreats. What, what an amazing gift. Um, and every day there's an opportunity to have a little Sabbath. And I want to bless us that in this day today, we find a moment to... Uh, to sink in deep to the place where, um, you know, the soul of all the worlds connects and gives us a pause, gives us a breath, and reminds us who we are. Sacred. Thank you for sharing this time. Sacred time. Learning Torah is also sacred time. It's also, um, you know, if I can take the uh, dare, have the chutzpah, and, and, and take the liberty to say that uh, our study is also... Um, as it were, a Sabbath of Sabbaths, a Shabbat Shabbaton. Um, and uh, again, with gratitude, it, it's just a privilege to share this time with you. I'm Rabbi Ruben Modek with uh, Makom Halev Community in Nyack, New York, and Hebrew Learning Circles, our unique educational program. Uh, please uh, like us. If this was meaningful uh, to you, uh, press the like button, why not? Uh, write a comment. Let's keep the conversation in uh, in the comments below, on Facebook or on YouTube, wherever you're um, uh, finding us. Uh, if you're in the New York area, drop a note or drop by. We'd love to uh, uh, connect with you. Um, certainly check us out on the web, makom-halev.org or hebrewlearningcircles.org. Uh, and um, finally, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Wishing you a fantastic day. Come back for more uh, the next day or the next. Uh, we'll be uh, um, learning here in our uh, Cyber Yeshiva almost every day. Shalom for now. <laughs>